What's up, my pilots? Angry Bonds here, and we're back playing Skyrim. I'd like to talk the episode of something exciting, like a loading screen. And so here it is. This is a book. This book has a little uh, swirly pattern on the front. Looks a little bit like the trefoil knot. Not quite. <laughs> Get it? I said not twice in the same sentence. It's almost a joke. So I'm just going to stick my ball, just one, into this dwarven mechanism, and it's going to open a staircase right underneath where we currently stand. And now we begin our adventure into Black Reach. I have to say, uh, I'm slightly more intoxicated than I should be in order to properly explain the awesome idea that Black Reach is. It is exactly... It's exactly what Skyrim should have been. Really. Oh, hang on. Throw the lever! Throw the lever before he moves! Ah, shit. I'll let that opportunity get away from me. Oh, well. We'll just shoot the Centron Sphere dude our ourselves. It's not that hard. Come here, buddy. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, you'll, you'll get a feel for the atmosphere as we move through the area, and if you haven't seen it before, you're going to be pleasantly surprised, because whereas most of Skyrim is basically gray, snow, gray buildings, more snow, just sort of... What are you? Oh, you're a farmer. It's so dark I couldn't even tell. I thought it was Lydia. <laughs> For a second there, I was like, wait a second. Oh, hello. You're doing pretty good damage, dude. His skin. I should wait around so I can get my his skin back pretty soon. Yeah, so Black Reach is, as you can see, an enormous underground cavern. Uh, the width and breadth of which is substantial. I don't know how big it would be if you actually laid it out on a map and compared it to the size of Skyrim. But it's big enough that it almost was like an expansion pack. Like it comes with a couple quests, and it's a big open area whose uh, sort of the feeling of which is not quite the same as the rest of Skyrim. It's almost like a miniature Shivering Isles, which went over quite well. I think Shivering Isles was a fairly successful DLC as far as DLCs go. Nope, oh, he spotted me. I think Lydia may have gave me away because they didn't see me when I cast the bow. I'd be surprised if they. Ugh, no, they're too far off. Oh, you know, I can zoom. Let's do that. Ow! You shot me. Yeah, you shot me again, and you still didn't even move, dude. Let's try this one more time. I'm gonna run out of fatigue before I kill this guy, probably. Oh, I got him! Nice. Okay, cool. About to blind fire the next one. This guy's gonna be a little tougher. You know what? Forget it. He's fine where he is. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the marble that is Black Reach, and it's just, I think it's a really cool idea. I wish that more of the dungeons of Skyrim were as unique as Black Reach is. This guy will actually fight you if you attack him. Probably not recommended, though. I mean, unless you just really want to. Oh, Charis. I think this is the first one of these we've seen. They're basically giant, nasty, poisonous bugs. I really don't like them. <laughs> as you might have guessed. Again, it took me a second to tell if that was uh, Falmer or Lydia. I guess that... It's kind of insulting Lydia, isn't it? Oh, sorry, Lydia, I thought you were a Falmer. A just, you know, a sort of disgusting, blind, subterranean elf breed species. Are they just a different kind of elf, or are they different species? What's the definition of species in Elder Scrolls terms? Are, are men and elves different species, or are they like different races of the same species? Are Red Guards and Imperials the same species? Because they both seem to be just, you know, normal humans, but different races. Whereas the elves almost seem like a different species from the humans. But really, you think in most canon, uh, various fantasy genres, the elves and the dwarves are different species, but in Elder Scrolls, they're one and the same. They're all just different varieties of elves. Almost makes you wonder if the humans themselves aren't just another variety of elves. Oh, he had some gold. The elves don't have... They don't have, they don't have crap. Falmer gear is cruddy and... Seven golds hardly worth stopping for. There was a wisp over there. I'm gonna ignore them. Let's follow the path, shall we? Yeah, so Black Reach is a good idea because it breaks the mold. It sort of goes away from what Skyrim typically looks like. And it doesn't even really look like any other caves in Skyrim. At least none, no substantial ones I can think of. I'd love to be able to cast my bow again. I really wish I had more magicka. Or at the very least, a potion that would restore it. Here we go. 
That'll do. Almost. There we go. That'll do. Yeah, we're getting into fights too often is what's happening. <laughs> I don't have time to restore my magic up between battles. Oh, buddy's getting closer there. Focus on one. Finish one, and then there'll be fewer enemies to contend with. Wow, I love, I have, I love how the ranger perk makes us this fast while we have the bow drawn. So now we can run away backwards just as fast as we normally could. Which makes it much easier to sort of strafe and dodge while you're using the bow. Another centuron. Again, I think you can fight those guys if you want, but the experience that you get is just firing a few arrows at them, so it's really not worth the trouble because they can kick your ass if you're not careful. So I'll let them be. I'll leave them be for now. But I haven't fully explained why Blackreach is awesome. The, the biggest thing, the most obvious thing, is that it, it's just it, it's a break in theme. You have different kinds of enemies. You have Falmer instead of the usual bandit wolves crap. And then the atmosphere is just so... It's really good. Like, do you hear the cinematic music that's playing right now? Like the Dovahkiin march or whatever? Like, nothing. I heard Lydia grunt. What are you doing, Lydia? Shut up. I'm trying to, make it, trying, to, trying to give an example here of the ambiance. It's so quiet. And I think part of the reason it's so quiet down here is because you want to be able to sneak around the Falmer, and you also want to be able to hear the red Nernroot when you're near it. So there's a, there's a number of reasons that Blackreach is awesome. And part of it is that you have the red Nernroot quest, uh, which, which compels you to explore the entirety of Blackreach. Which is, uh, I don't feel like I'm fully able to explain why it's so cool. I think the biggest reason it's that is that it, it's really the only part of Skyrim that feels like a fully fleshed out dungeon cave area. It isn't just some radiant mine that you get sent to randomly and fight some Draugr and then one Draugr Scourge Lord and then you get a like a enchanted bow and you leave and that's it. No, it actually it's different. It has a it has a couple quests associated with it. It has unique enemies. I don't know if they're unique, but it's got some uh, Falmer who've actually taken people as their slaves. Which is kind of weird. And then it has the Wisps. It's got the red Nernroot. It has the different atmosphere. And it has the really cool location where it's like hidden underground underneath Skyrim. That's really neat. I can't think of another video game that has that kind of weird thing. Mazark! The Tower of Mazark! That's what I was thinking of. Mazulft is another Dwarven Ruin. It was, it was Mazark that was getting me confused. Alright. Jeez, the dwarves should have better differentiated the names of their various uh, ruins. I guess they weren't ruins at the time, were they? Alright, what do we got? We have what well, looks like a soul gem that's still rolling back and forth. That's really weird to find that sitting here. I guess there are Falmer nearby. We'll have to use extreme caution. Extremely caution. Oh, no, wait. No, this is totally fine. We're already there. Sweet! See the giant ball? That's important. We'll be doing something with that in a moment here, you'll see. This is one, And this is one of the cooler quests, too. The, the final culmination of all of this, what is going to end up being like an hour and a half of work, is that you actually do find the Elder Scroll, I mean, obviously, right? <laughs> it's kind of written into the plot. Hang on, now, isn't there supposed to be someone here? No, wait, hang on. I am so totally wrong. I, c I am getting this completely confused with another quest. No, you go to Mazul for the Mages Guild, and that's how you find the great sources of magical power in, in uh, Skyrim that tell you where you can find the staff of... Uh, Alright, fine. Goodness. That makes so much more sense. Alright, great. This one you just put it in, right? Or do you have to do the puzzle here, too? I guess that's why I'm getting confused, because apparently even this really cool puzzle is actually not that unique. Just push all the buttons. Alright, that didn't seem to do anything. How about this button? No? No effect. This one? Alright, that's me to go back. I don't know if I want that, but whatever. Push it again. Nothing happened. Alright, try that one again. I'll turn you once more. Stuff happening here? Nope. Alright. You guys aren't turned on, though. The little buttons here don't seem to be active. Try it again. Oh! The little box opened. Apparently, pushing it over and over again is the solution. <gasps> Look at there. Oh, got it. You know what? You know why I like this? You know, one of the reasons that this is appealing to me? It reminds me of, of the Mist series. 
Although, this is really just the illusion of solving a puzzle. All you're actually doing is pushing buttons over and over until stuff happens. Aww. Come on down, puppy. Like, doesn't it, doesn't, okay, those of you who've played any of the Myst series, doesn't it feel like there should be a linking book in here? This looks just like where they would keep a linking book, man! It's, it's too similar. And here we have the Elder Scroll. Sweet! Nice! That's almost as cool as a linking book, to be honest. Because a linking, a linking book takes you to a whole other world. Elder Scroll is just kind of a nice piece of paper with some funny stuff on it. Actually, what is on this thing? Scrolls. Hang on a second. I have, I have a scrolls section in my inventory. Why the fuck isn't my Elder Scroll in the scrolls section? It's, apparently it's a book. Hey, Elder Scroll. You weigh 20 pounds and have zero value. Let's open you. Oh gosh, probably shouldn't be reading Elder Scrolls. I'm blind! Oh no! Lydia! Lydia, take me out of here, please! I can't see- oh no, never mind, I'm fine. Apparently I'm one of those people who looks at the Elder Scroll and has no understanding of anything that's written on it, and so I receive only a temporarily blind blindness thing, and I don't actually lose my vision forever, like the uh, moth, pl moth priests did. If you read that book, which I uh, read in, like, alien jive language, uh, I guess last episode? No, the one before last. Uh, you'll know that reading the Elder Scrolls can turn you blind, but only if you actually have a modicum of capability to understand what's written on it, and then you really only go blind if you get a little bit greedy and try and take too much knowledge from it. As I understand it, that's the situation. Well, geez, that was quick. I didn't think, I didn't know we were so close. You see, Blackreach is a really big area. So you see how far we went? We went from Althand all the way over, and I left the lexicon. Wow. Nicely done, Poncho. I was wondering what my quest icon was still pointing to the Althand towers or whatever. It's like, wait a minute, shouldn't it be sending me to the next area because we already started the next quest and all that? No big deal, it's just one room away. Biggest thing is the loading screens. Yeah, so did I... Did I transcribe the lexicon, or did I just... Whoops. It did open up, right? Was that, was that what I was doing? Yes, there you go. Ah, ruined lexicon added. We now have the lexicon, apparently, with all the dwarven knowledge ever on it. So that's cool. People are texting me. Whoa! My friend just recorded his first episode of his first LP. He's doing a Pokemon Emerald Nuzlocke. Awesome. Um, there will be a link in the description to that video. By which I mean, there will not be a link in the description until someone tells me to put it there. So please, be that person. Be the cool dude who tells me, well, the cool dude or dudette. I have a lot of dudette pilots, I've noticed. It's kind of a cool thing, actually. Be the dude or dudette who tells me to put a link to my friend's LP. And then, if he actually thinks it's cool, I'll do it. <laughs> if he thinks it's weird, I won't. Yeah, so we've located the Elder Scroll that was used to cast Alduin forward into our time by the Nord heroes of old. If Parthenax is right, if I read it near the time wound, I'll get a vision of the past when the ancient Nords, the ancient tongues, used the dragon wren shout against Alduin. Well, hell. You know, we gotta, we gotta go do that. We gotta go back to the throat of the world. This is when it gets fun. The next few quests for the, next few quests for the main quest line are really the whole crux of the matter. You're getting into really particular shouts, you're getting to see historic events, and it, it's sort of the plot begins to unfold a little more directly. There's no more random side... You have it. Ooh. The Kel, the Elder Scroll. I do, I have it. Tidkrech, Kalos. Time shudders at its touch. Brown chicken, brown cow. There is no question. You are doom-driven. Dankeschön. Kogan Akatosh. The very bones of the earth are at your disposal. Hearing on this dragon talk makes me want to talk back to them in German. Go then. Fulfill your destiny. Take the scroll to the time wound. Alrighty. This will be Do fun. Do not delay. Alduin will be coming. What? He cannot miss the sign. Oh, hell yes. I'll learn the shout, and then we'll kick his ass! We can't go wrong. Hee 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 Oh yeah. So if you look carefully, there's a sort of a... 
it's hard to see. Hang on, can I clear the, the skies for a moment here? You're going to want to see this. This is a neat thing to note. I actually didn't notice it until like my second playthrough because it's, oh, it's hidden in the snow here. But if you can shout away... The, can I shout away the weather? Hello? I just did clear skies. Where's my clear sky? Oh, there it goes. Yeah, so if you look, there's like a, a pillar of sparkly things here. It's still hard to see even with clear skies because you have the wind. Yeah, I think you can see it right there. And that's the time wound. It can be hard to spot in the snow. But when you stand in it, your vision kind of wiggle woggles like this. Here, I'll look at something steady. So, oh wow, oh my God, it's gorgeous up here with the with the snow gone. Man, that's that's totally how it is in real life, though. Like, the the sky when viewed from a mountaintop, it looks clearer because there really is less air in the way. It's really it's really cool, Lydia. Your little defog thing isn't not lining up with your body. Oh, look at that. That's funny. Wow, this game is bad. Alrighty, drive in the Barbie car. All right, Elder Scroll. I'm going to read you here in the time wound, and we'll, uh, we'll just see what happens. Whoa. Lydia, you have two heads. What the hell? Oh, God. I've caused Lydia to develop some kind of horrible birth defect. Huh? What am I doing? Whoa. Dragons. Today, Alduin's lordship will be restored. But I honor your courage. Kreef Wolf Akrin, die now in vain. For Skyrim! This is exciting. It looks just like when I fight the dragons, except with an axe. Nice! Oh man, I haven't gotten that cinematic yet. That's we done, Gormley. A glorious day, is it not? Have you no thought beyond the blooding of your blade? <laughs> what else is there? The battle below goes ill. If Aldun does not rise to our challenge, I fear all may be lost. You worry too much, brother. Victory will be ours! Why does Alduin hang back? We've staked everything on this plan of yours, old man. He will come. He cannot ignore our defiance. And why should he fear us, even now? We blooded him well. Four of his kin have fallen to my blade alone. But none have yet stood against Alduin himself. Both Sori, Birka. They did not have Dragonrend. Once we bring him down, I promise, I will have his head. You do not understand. Alduin cannot be slain like a lesser dragon. He is beyond our strength. Which is why I brought the Elder Scroll. Veldir, we agreed not to use it. I never agreed. And if you are right, I will not need no, it. We will deal with Alduin ourselves. Beard now. We shall see soon enough. Alduin approaches. So be it. This is actually kind of cool. Gazuntite. Let those that watch from Savengard envy us this day. This is a very heavy threat. If I die today, it will not be in terror. 
Whoa, hello. Oh, whoa, she didn't do so well. It's no use. Hold all of us on the wing. Sister Hawk, grant us a sacred breath to make this contract heard. Be gone, world eater. By words with older bones. Other one's getting a little repetitive there. We break your perch on this age and send you out. Chomp chomp. You are banished. We shout you out from all our endings unto the last. You, you are banished. Nice. That guy's about dead. It worked. We did it. Yes. The world eater is gone. May the spirits have mercy on our souls. Yeah, thanks, dude. You just kicked him into my age. Now I have to deal with this shit. Ugh. Thanks for Dragon Ren, though. Appreciate it. Big props for making that shout up. Well done. Now we can have some fun of our own. Hey, hey. Defeat what? Alrighty then. Let's try this again, shall we? I've been experiencing an annoying bug in which Alduin becomes completely invincible once you Dragon Rend him. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, I've heard enough of your talk. Alduin, let's do this shit. I'm gonna hang out over here and take some cover behind the word wall when he starts using his fire breath on me. How, how cliche that he's got fire breath. I mean, really? Yes! He would, appear, he, would, he would appear to not be invincible, thank goodness. Let's see if we can take him out. Hopefully he won't kill Lydia in like two hits like he's done previously. But you never know. He's certainly capable. We'll assist with shouts as often as possible. I'm not exactly a damage per second kind of character, but you know. <laughs> we'll do what we can. I'm gonna drink both of my potions of regen. Just to make sure that as soon as I start taking damage, it starts coming back. Oop! Not gonna get me. Yeah, how about that dragon ran? Part next, helping out. Looks like Lydia's back up too. Oh no, wait, that's just his icon moving around. Apparently there's some fire on me right now. Let me just heal that up a little bit. Hey, I can't see. It's hard to aim when the camera starts shaking around like that. Whoa! I have to be careful you don't accidentally dragon rent Parthernax in this battle. That'll sort of cripple him and make it a little him a little bit less helpful. Oh, careful. Get behind the wall when he starts shouting at you. And here comes the final blow! Nice. Get out of here, Alduin, you jerk. That's what they say. But I am Al Duin, firstborn of Akatosh. Yeah, yeah. Malug is so clot. I cannot be slain here by you or anyone else. Well, then just go away. I've had enough of your shit, Halloween. You cannot prevail against me. I will outlast you, mortal. Get out of here. Gone! Shoo! And if you ever do it again, I'll hit you with a newspaper. Bad dragon! Bad! Hey, what the hell just happened, Barthnex? Lot Kongrach. You truly have the voice of a Dova. Alduin's allies will think twice after this victory. No, they won't. Nothing will change. Uh, it wasn't really a victory since he kind of just flew away. Totally fine. Nilivrahin Moro. True, this is not the final Krongra victory. But not even the heroes of old were able to defeat Alduin in open battle. Yeah, yeah, I saw. I was I was sort of there. Alduin always was Pachlok, 
arrogant in his power. It's a dragon. That's how they are. No par. He took domination as his birthright. Brown chicken, brown cow. This should shake the loyalty of the Dove who serve him. Oh, I see. Cool. It's a political struggle now. Just what I was hoping for. Where where do you go? Yes. One of his allies could tell us. Mat Mahus. No, I don't think Gandhi can help. It will not be so easy to convince one of them to betray him. You did it. Oop. Did I say that? Perhaps the Half Kasayun, the palace in Whiterun, Dragon's Reach. It was originally built to house a captive Dova. Well, that Dova was already captive at the time. It's... A fine place to trap one of Alduin's allies, hmm? A good idea, I guess. It certainly has potential. I don't know if the Jarl of White One... Actually, he might think so. He totally loves me because I put him in power. Hmm, yes. But your Soom is strong. I do not doubt that you can convince him of the need. Well, I guess I can try. So, uh... Wait, this is normal dialogue now. Alright, I'm gonna go talk to him. Talk to you later. S same to you, bro. Well, that was quite an adventure. I ended up fighting Alduin several times because of this weird bug, but, uh, whatever. We got him in the end. It only actually took two real tries once he started taking damage. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode of Let's Play Skyrim, we're gonna go back to Whiterun and talk to Jarl Greymane about uh, the, the small matter of capturing a dragon in Dragon's Reach. Thanks for watching, and see you guys then.